good day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In this video, we will discuss information systems analysis using data modeling. More precisely, we will try to analyze the company's business processes using data flow diagram and data dictionary. Data flow diagram is a data flow notation in business transactions, including business processes or information systems, entities and data stores as the data sources and data recipients, and the data flow. The data flow diagram model can be described by the following symbols. The first one is a blunt box or circle to describe an information system or process. And the second one is a box diagram describe the external entity of the information systems as a source of data as well as the receiver of data. The third one is an arrow line to describe the flow of the data. And the last one, drawn as an open-ended rectangle, as shown in the figure to describe the data store, which is also the source and receiver of the data. While the data dictionary describes the data that becomes the object to be flown on data flow diagram, the structure of data dictionary consists of data structures that contain data elements, describing the data entities and their respective attributes. For example, in here, students who want to log in to the login system such as CMaster will provide a login data that includes the attributes which are the student ID and the passwords. And it can be seen here that both the data flow diagram and data dictionary have a complementary relationship. The data in the data flow diagram can be explained using a data dictionary and the data dictionary needs data flow diagram to explain the process of data flow. In the following are the steps in building a data flow diagram. The first one is to determine the business process or information systems and the external entity of the process, the data flow, and the data stores. And the second one is to create a contextual diagram to describe the system or the process in general. Usually, the data store has not yet been identified here. An example of a contextual diagram is shown here. A system 0 has three entities, entities 1, 2, and 3. Entity 1 and 2 is the source of data, which sends input A and B to system 0. After being processed by system 0, it will send an output C to entity 3. And next on the third step is to create a logical diagram level 0, which is a more detailed diagram compared to the contextual diagram. Now we can see the data sources. The following is an example of a level 0 logical diagram. The previous system 0 can now be broken down into four more detailed processes. So now we can see that entity 1 sends data A to process 1, while entity 2 sends data B to process 3, and entity 3 receives data C from process 2. In this figure, we can also see several more detailed processes. For example, Data from entity 1 is processed and stored in file D1 and the data will be retrieved by process 3 and together with data from entity 2 will be processed to produce data D which is flown to process 4. Next, the fourth step is to make a child diagram which is a more detailed diagram for each processes on the diagram level 0. By breaking down the processes on the level 0 logical diagram, we usually call this the level 1 logical diagram. For example, we can see in the following figure, which is 
a more detailed fraction of the previously processed tree. We can see here that the process tree is now broken down into several more detailed processes. The data B from entity 2 is sent to process 3.1, which can also produce an error. And the process of 3.1 will produce a data flow that will be recorded and stored in the D5 data store. Meanwhile, on the detailed process 3.2, it will retrieve data from D5 and D1 and to be processed together in process 3.2 and the result will be sent to process 3.3 and the process of the 3.3 will produce data flow D to be sent to process 4. Breaking down the business processes up to level 1 is usually sufficient to explain the detailed business process of a company. However, in a more complex company, usually you need to further broken down the business processes to level 2 or maybe level 3. Next, the fifth step is to do some error checking to ensure that there are no errors on the data flow diagram. The general rule for drawing data flow diagram is that you need to draw in sequence input, process, and output. It can also be input, process 1, process 2, process 3, and then output. But it always has to have input and process and output. It cannot go with input then output or process without input or even process without output. The input should come from an entity or data store and the output should be sent to an entity or another data store. You can see the common errors in the following figures. Some of them are for example, 1. Data flown from an entity to a data store. The second mistake is where you have a process without an output. And the third one is the opposite. You have a process without an input. And the last one is from a data source to another data source or from an entity to another entity. Now those are some of the common mistakes when you are drawing the data flow diagram. After we finish with the error checking, the next step is to create a physical data flow diagram. Physical data flow diagram is very different with the logical data flow diagram. A logical data flow diagram shows a concept of business process, while the physical data flow diagram shows the real activities inside a business process. This means that the physical data flow diagram will show all the real activities inside the information system. We can see the difference between logical and physical diagram in this figure. For example, at the checkout process, in the physical diagram, it shows that the physical process is to scan barcode. While on the second process, lookup for price, the physical process consists of looking up an UPC code and then based on the UPC code, it will retrieve the item description and the item prices. And on the third process, calculating the totals, the systems will create a temporary query transaction file to calculate the subtotal and then send the totals to the process back. And last, on the fourth process, the receiving payment process, the physical diagram will show the types of payment that will be received, whether it's cash, check, or debit card. And finally, the last step, which is the seventh step, is to create partitions for all of the processes. 
Based on the previous physical data flow diagram, we can create several partitions based on the processes that is being drawn from the level zero data flow diagram. Usually, each process on the level zero data flow diagram can be made as a separate module or partitions. However, it doesn't mean that only one can be made as a module. It can also be one or two or more processes be made into one module. For example, in this figure, you can see that the process 1 and 2 is actually partitioned as only one module where new customer records will be added once they initiate a transaction order. This means that process 1 and 2 can be initiated at the same time. While other processes need to be run individually, so they need to be separated into several partitions. Next, we will discuss how to develop a data dictionary from the data flow diagram that has been created. The process is actually quite simple. We only need to describe the data both that is inside the entity source or the data source and that is flown into and out of a process. First, we will start by describing the data structure, then proceed with description of the data elements and also the description of the data storage. The descriptions of the data structure is described in a structure format, which is given the following notations. The first is an equal sign that describes the contents of an entity consisting of several attributes. And the second one is a plus sign to describe a series of attributes belonging to a particular entity. The third one is with braces sign to describe elements whose values are repetitive. And the fourth one is braces sign to describe elements whose values are alternatives, for example, alternative A or alternative B. And the fifth one is with a parenthesis sign to describe elements whose values are actually optional. We can see examples of the notations in the figure. Available order item has more than one value, so it's a repetitive. That is why it uses the braces sign. Next is the method of payment elements. It has several alternative options. That is why it uses the bracket sign. And next is the credit card type, number, and expiration date is the optional element. It is shown with the parenthesis sign. These elements will be loaded only if the previously method of payment alternative, which is the credit card alternative, is being chosen. And next is the data element. It is usually described as a metadata, which is data that can explain another data. The data element is commonly divided into identity number, element name, element type, element length, element validation criteria, element brief description, etc. Each of which describe the characteristics of the elements. While for the data storage description, usually contains characteristics similar to that of a data element. But in addition, it also includes a primary key and secondary key that usually used to link to other files to form a database. In the following, we can see an example of a form containing a data element description. It is usually divided into three different sections. The first one is the element identification. The second one is the element characteristics. And the last one is the element validation criteria.
And next, it is an example of a form containing a data storage element, which also contains the element identification and element characteristics, including both the primary key and secondary key that I have previously mentioned to form a database. This data dictionary can be developed into XML form, extensible markup language form, which can be applied as a very flexible form of data in an information system. An example is shown here. On your left, you can see the data dictionary format. And while on the right is actually the mapping of the previous data dictionary format into an XML format that has been filled with data values and example. In here, some of the examples are the customer's data. In order to get a better understanding of extensible markup language, you can follow the network tutorial model that I will show in the link in the description of this video below. That's all that we can discuss. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next session. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.